Hello everyone, welcome back. I am uh, out checking on some fields today. We, uh, this is the patch that we have planting two and three of sweet corn in 2020 this year. Uh, probably the best field of corn we had all year but uh, I'm going to talk a little bit about it there's there's five acres in this field it uh, there's a little section cut out here where they had the storage building lot and then uh, it runs down you can see the lay of the field here <coughs> it's right in the uh, it's right off the main highway in our county and uh, it uh, is also uh, surrounded by a commercial you got a sawmill there you got a, a propane company here uh you got the county recycle center right over there and the old asphalt plant right down there of course storage buildings but uh the reason i point that out is uh it's a good piece of farmland but it's kind of right in the middle of a bunch of development <clears throat> but i was told by the landowner that this property was when they built the road through here, it got designated for ag, ag use only. But uh, that's a whole nother story. If it hadn't been, it'd probably be developed by now. You can see there's development on up that way as well. But uh, it's going. it brings me to my point of what I was going to talk about today, what this video is about, is leasing farmland. Uh, the do's, the don'ts, the horror stories, etc., etc., etc. We lease this property. We lease most of the ground that we farm. And uh, uh, ever this time of year, I'm looking at doing cover crops, closing fields out and stuff like that. And some of the folks that we lease off of, you know, they, they want cover crops. Some don't matter. You know, there, there's <clears throat> some leases are more involved than others. And, uh, some leases are more expensive than others uh this particular particular piece of property it's good ground uh it don't have water on it it does not have electricity on it so uh it's just ground and uh so we got to keep in mind what crops we can grow on it so how much we can pay for a lease is dependent upon that but uh when you're leasing farm ground you uh th there's a couple things number one the ground what you're going to use for use it for uh how big it is how handy it is to your other operations uh, all that goes into effect if this piece of ground bordered some other property that we leased we could pay more for it if it uh <clears throat> have water on it and irrigation and all that we might be able to pay more for it uh you know and i'm not going to say what i pay for it for obvious reasons but uh that's uh that's what you run into another another thing you look at is you know what's the ground being used before if you've had a farmer on here that did not spend any money on fertilize it's going to uh, take some more money to build it up that's the same with pasture ground or whatever. So, the, you know, watching pays a little less. Uh, another thing is the people you lease it off of. Uh, some folks are like, okay, you know, we're going to lease it to you. You take care of it. You know, want it cover crop, keep it clean, have fun. Other folks want it, you know, a lot of times uh, landowners will want a timeline. <clears throat> I want this done, this, this, this. I avoid those leases like the plague. Because just as sure as you tell them, hey, look, I'll get this done. At, you know, in the spring, we'll go in and do this. Or in the fall, we'll do this. Just as sure as you do, uh, it will, uh, the weather or something will happen and the timeline gets messed up. You may still get it done, but then, then they get difficult. Uh, so basically if I got a difficult landowner, I do not release that property period. Uh, it ain't worth it. I don't like being drove crazy or aggravated or whatever. So 
through the years of land that we release, uh, those are the folks that we like to deal with. And, you know, the folks that have a good experience working with us. <clears throat> Some people you cannot please. Uh, regardless of what you do, they're not going to be happy. Uh, some people want you to make the mortgage payment on the property. You can't do that. Uh, you know, one guy, we at least a piece of ground one time for pumpkins and, uh, <clears throat> leased it one year, paid the guy a fire amount. And then the next year he wanted to release it to us. We cleaned it up, <coughs> cleaned the ground up, uh, put a lot of fertilizer on it, went back in, cover cropped it and everything. And the next year he came to us and he wanted like five times as much for the lease. And uh, I just looked at him and said, no. And uh, he's like, but it's worth it. I said, I'm not buying it, I'm leasing it. And uh, you know, that's the thing. I had another guy, there's a field not far from here and I ain't gonna point exactly, but it's not far from here. Uh, you could just about throw a rock to it. And he wanted to, uh, somebody told me he had his for leased. It was two and a half acres. And he wanted, uh, I believe $2,500 a year to lease it. And uh, I just told him, I said, look, I'll buy it off of you, <laughs> but I'm not gonna pay you uh, uh, $1,000 an acre for lease. That's just not gonna happen. Uh, you know, it's the profit margins are too tight on what I'm doing now. I mean, I go broke doing that, can't do that. And, uh, you know, I just have to quit farming before I could do that. Uh, because I would be quitting farming if I paid that kind of lease because I'd be broke in a couple years. But anyhow, that's, uh, but if you're looking to lease ground, talk to the landowner, uh, you know, a lot of times when you lease ground, you deal with a family. You know, the, the, the grandmother may own the land and then you have children and grandchildren that have an interest in it. And uh, just deal with the one that owns it and uh, be done with it. But it's, uh, you know, that's that's part of it. And don't ever, ever be a, I'm willing to walk away from a piece of ground. If uh, they think you have to have it, then you can run into some issues. But, uh, you know, <clears throat> hopefully we'll get this ground back next year. I don't see a problem. But, uh, you know, one thing that this landowner does want is a cover crop. So even though it's got a good crop of uh, uh, mustard greens growing on it, uh, as you can see, it's green. Uh, what we'll do is come in here and put a uh, winter wheat on it uh, just to... Uh, just to meet them those requirements that they ask us to do so you know that's that's another thing a lot of times you'll lease off people who ask you to do things and occasionally you'll run into those who demand it <clears throat> once again you know be careful but it, it works good to get it in writing uh, he, uh if it's someone that you've worked with in the past and are good good with uh do a multi-year lease that way you know you can uh, do more uh, planning uh, stuff like that if it's someone you've never worked with uh, one year lease is probably the best way to go because you can get yourself into a bit of a bind uh, avoid timelines you know just just avoid them uh, and be sure you know what you're leasing uh, like I said, you know, this is just farm ground. Uh, there's pros and cons to every piece of ground you look at the farm and, uh, you know, does it fit your operation? <clears throat> I mean, I've got, I, I could lease more land. Problem is it's a, you know, 45 minute drive to get to it. when you're running multiple trips a week, it, it adds up. This is, mm, uh, this is about as far out from, this is as farthest out from my home of any of them, but 
It's a good piece of ground, grows good stuff. <clears throat> now we put pumpkins in here two years in a row. We put corn in here last year. It'll either, if we get it next year, it'll be either be corn again or back to pumpkins. So it'll be one of those two crops. But that's where uh, that's where we're at on that. But it's uh, there's a lot to look at when you're leasing property. Uh, and if you're in an area like us where farmland is pretty scarce, buying it is usually not an option but uh, sometimes it is so you know as as i move forward i hope to farm more and more owned acres and fewer and fewer leased acres <clears throat> if you own it then you're the landlord you have to deal with and sometimes that's a good thing sometimes that's a bad thing but uh, you know most farmers lease land and when you lease land you got to be uh, aware of the pitfalls the upsides and the downsides one good thing to leasing it, you're not tied to a mortgage. One bad thing to leasing it, you may <coughs> may not have it next year. So, uh, you know, that's something you look for. And starting out, when I first started into the vegetables, I would lease smaller pieces of land, land that wasn't as good as what I've got now, <coughs> just to get a good start. And then slowly as better land becomes available uh, you know at least hit now one thing that i do not do i've never done it and i will not do it if there is a farmer leasing a piece of ground i will not try to lease it out from under him, uh, him or her i will not do that uh, there's a piece of ground a really good piece of ground that i could you know i know the landowner good and they would lease it to me immediately. They've told me that repeatedly. But there's another farmer grow, leasing on it, and you know, he's doing a good job, and there's they've not kicked him off or nothing like that. I will not lease a piece of ground out from under another farmer. I've had that done to me a time or two. <clears throat> don't care for it, and I don't want to do that to somebody else. So that's a little bit about leasing farmland. Uh, uh, kind of all over the place i know but oh well anyhow if you like what we're doing please subscribe hit that notification bell see a video you like give it a thumbs up if you got a question or comment please do so in the next week or so we hope to be getting these cover crops in uh what we'll do is run over this with the disc broadcast you know chop it up a little bit broadcast the seed and then lightly disc it in and uh That'll be ready for next year till the more board plow. <clears throat> Everybody take care of yourself. Get out and enjoy this beautiful fall weather. Bye.